Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of PAX. I know, I'm dead. Sorry, I just, like, recorded a five-hour Terraria video movie last night, and it's uploading on the channel. So, anyways, let's get straight to this. Chapter 5. And is that, if you guys want to see more, just tell me. This is my territory. Pax was so startled that he nearly toppled from the oak trunk he'd been drowsing on all day. He'd been keeping watch and seen nothing larger than a grasshopper. And now there, and now here was a bright fern vixen. He had never seen another fox before, but he knew younger and smaller and female but fox. Instinct told him also that the way she held her ears in terror until a wrecked meant she expected his submission. I hunt here. Pax felt an urge to run back to his crude nest and press himself into the remaining stalks, as if retreating to his pen, but he resisted it. What if his boy came back and he wasn't there? He flattened his ears to show he meant no threat. But that he would have not not leave. The vixen paced over, and Pax drew in her scent, as familiar as his own, but also exotic. She sniffed and bristled in distrust at the human scent on him. Pax had been born with that same instinct as well, but distrust is no match for kindness, administered c consistently and unmeasured, especially in new creatures. New to the world, Pax had only been had only been sixteen sixteen days old when Peter had rescued rescued him, a fatherless, motherless curl of charcoal fur. His eyes barely opened, and it wasn't for long, and it wasn't long before he come to trust the quiet, gangling boy who brought him home. The vixen poked her snout in to sniff him more closely and bristled again. The scent is my boys. Is my boys? Have you seen him? Pax stare, shared the most important features of his human: the naked round ears, the towering legs, so improb improbably long that Pax always feared he would topple off when he ran. The bat, the black curled hair that grew to different lengths, then became short again. No humans are here. But they are approaching. Just then, Russell's head rose if jerked on an unseen wire. Her ears pricked, trained on a slight rustling in, in a nearby tuft of broom set, uh, siege. Her rear began to twitch, gathering energy. She, she sprang high and then paused tight over her black nose dived into the grass with a flash of white tip tail. Pax sat up, alert. In a second, Bristle's head reappeared, and in her jaws was a wood rat. She leaped clear of, of the grass, bit through the rat's neck, then dropped it to the ground. Orphaned before she, she'd been weaned, Pax had never eaten raw prey. His hunger rose at the blood scent, and so did his curiosity. He took a cautious step closer. Bristle growled, and Pax retreated to watch from a safe distance. He grew hungrier as she crunched bites. He thought of the briming comfort of his nibble bowl, the pleasure of Peter's hand-fed treats, and the ultimate reward, peanut butter. He needed to find his boy. His boy would feed him. And before he could ask about the approaching humans, Russell picked, picked up what remained of the rat, a single hidden leg with a long tail, and, and stalked it off with dangling from her jaw. Max watched as she, as she wove her way between the grass tufts, becoming only... Flashes of faint of flame and white leaving. 
He was struck by the memory of his human's car. Roaring away in its, sting, in its stinging spray of gravel. Just before she slipped into a fringe of ferns at the wood's edge, she paused to glance at him over her shoulder. At that moment, a sharp snap from the fallen oak startled her. It was followed by a red streak of fur that hurtled from the dry foliage, flew over the weeds, and landed on her back. Pax flattened himself. He could hear the vixen's yips as she scuffled with her attacker, but they sounded more irritated than afraid. He poked his head up. Put his head up. Bristol pounced on a ball of fur and bit it hard. To Pax's surprise, a smaller, skinnier version of herself unfurled at her paws. Pax was stunned. Never had he suspected that foxes might soar like birds, uh, whose swooping arcs were not like any movement he himself could achieve. The little fox flipped to his back and gave his belly in submission. But this seemed only to make Bristol angrier. Her chattering now punctuated by jabs and nymphs. Pax bounded over. Overcome by curiosity, the skinny fox startled at the unfamiliar, unfamiliar human scent and looked over Bristol's shoulder. His eyes widened when he spied Axe, and he scrambled to his paws. Friendly, he announced to Pax, brother but, but not literally of the vixen. Play. Bristol dare, bared her teeth and snarled at her brother. Dangerous. Stay away. Pax ignored Bristle's warning posture and met the greeting. Friendly, you flew, bird. The fox, the little fox bounded back to the fallen oak, then sprang into its trunk. One fork of the dead tree angled up. <clears throat> the small fox walked lightly along its length. He looked down to make sure Pax was watching. Pax dropped and tucked his paws under his chest, but it was hard to keep from leaping onto the tree to try it himself. He had climbed the walls of his pen, of course, but he had never been higher than six feet. His brush twitched. The vixen stalked a few a few steps away and then dropped to the ground. She rolled onto her side to gaze directly up at her brother. Her love for him obvious now. He was the runt. He's small, but he's tough. I don't want him with me. When I hunt, but he follows me. He tossed. She tossed her head and growled at Pax, as though blaming him for his brother, for his brother's, for her brother's play. The runty little fox stepped out along the branch, tail poised for balance, and curled himself and leaped out over the heads of the earth-bound foxes. He landed in a clump. <clears throat> Almost done. <clears throat> of burdock beside the road, and then burst out covered in burrs. He tore around in mad circles as if soaring had filled him with excess of joy that he had to be spent throughout through his legs, and then flung himself on to the ground to roll out the rest. His sister pounced on him, too close to the road. While she pulled while she pulled the birds from his coat, she scoiled him for the recklessness of his flight. But but Pax marveled at it. A good five full bounds he traveled without touching paws to the ground. He would try to feed himself one day. When Runt managed to get to his feet, he lowered his head and nuzzled his sister. She knocked him back to the ground. Only mock rough this time. And then sat on him, pinning him down. He struggled a little, but never really tried to upset her. And he protested only meekly when she began to groom him. Pax settled himself a respectful distance away. 
after a while. After a while, her brother, now properly subdued and her irritation spent, Bristol retrieved the morsel of rat and dropped it in front of him. She lay down and began to lick her paws, then to clean her face with them. Pax edged closer, so low that his belly brushed the ground. The company of these two young foxes drew him, whether he was welcomed or not. Bristle stretched out in a patch of slanting sunlight. Her damp cheeks glistened like the pumpkin-colored wood of the table where Pax's humans ate their food, brilling against the white of her sleek throat. Pax looked over at Runt, who was sniffing the spot where Pax had slept. His coat markings were identical, but not as vibrant. His fur, his fur was sparse and, tough, and tufty in places, and his hip bones protruded at sharp angles. He reared back suddenly and pounced in mock attack. Pax watched his Runt toss the toy soldier into the air and, pin, and then pinned it down and over and over. He had done the same thing as Kit. He trotted over and joined the game, and Runt welcomed him as though they had played together since birth. Bristol got to her feet. Bring it here. Her brother ignored her for a moment, but then, as if he had been judging the limits of his sister's patience, he looped over and dropped the toy at her paws. Bristol issued a throaty rattle at the soldier. Human, leave it home now. She ordered her brother run leaned into Pax and braced his forelegs. Bristol sprang back to nip at her brother. She stinks of the humans, remember? Pax was startled by the image she communicated to her brother. Then a cold howling wind, a mated pair of foxes struggling with something that reminded Pax of his pen steel. But with, but with jaws and clamps instead of bars, the steel jaws and the snowy ground were smeared with blood. Bristle tipped her head to assess the sky and sniffed the breeze, which carried the threat of thunderstorms from the south home. Runt lowered his tail and began to follow his sister, but then he turned back to Pax, inviting him to come along as well. Pax hesitated. He didn't want to leave the spot his humans would return to, but dark clouds were rolling in. And just then, thunder boomed in the distance. He knew his boy would not venture out during a storm. He didn't want to think of getting drenched by the side of the wood, the, the road, alone. He took the toy shoulder into his cheek and set out after the two foxes. Bristle turned when she sensed his present. One night only, human sn stinker. Pax agreed. He would follow this ascent back to the road after the storm. His humans would come for him then. And then once he found his boy, he would never leave his side. Whew! That was a chapter. I like that chapter. That was, um, that was a fairly decent chapter. Um, no, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the chapter of PAX. I'm sorry that I didn't upload a video yesterday. It's just because I was recording again Terraria video. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next PAX. Bye-bye!